I was born in Mexborough. I'm actually living in the house I was born in. So I was born 58 years ago. Uh, well, I'll be 58 in March. Um, all our family basically has lived in Mexborough. Uh, my parents both came from Mexborough. So the Beale family has been in this town probably two or three hundred years when I've actually done the research on it. I'm Sally Lockie, Project Director for Right of Power Street. Um, and Cozy Cinema came about six years ago. Um, working as part of Right of Power Street, we have a number of priority areas, Mexbra being one of them. Uh, the Right of Power Street programme wanted to help support the community to work out what arts interests they had. So I'm Helen Watson, a production designer. I work in film and television. I got into the industry through originally an art background so I studied at the Doncaster Church View uh, then I went on and did a fine art degree at Bretton Hall at which I then pursued photography so I originally was a set designer in TV commercials and stills and then I started to work with production companies who do film and television. Now I was born around it here I was born in Doncaster actually, but I was brought up in Luton. Uh, so my fo uh, formative years were in Luton for 25 years. But I've always had an affinity with Max, but I've always come back. I've been back uh, every summer um, and Christmas to see my relatives here. And uh, that's why I joined the Mexborough and District Heritage Society, which I have been the, the secretary for about eight years now. One of the first cinemas was the Cozy Cinema. Uh, it didn't actually last long. It, it, it was around in the First World War. It was only around for a few months. The other ones were the Empire. Um, I mean, the building, the Empire building it, it is still there. One of the other first ones was the um, Prince of Wales. It was a theatre, but it was also a cinema. Uh, as well. Another one was the Electric Theatre. Um, now the Electric Theatre is still there uh, as a, as a, a, a Chinese uh, restaurant. Um, and then there was the Oxford uh, Picture Palace. The only cinema that was open when I, I was growing up was the Majestic. The other two that were still in existence, the Electric Theatre and the Empire, had already closed by that point. The Empire uh, was a bingo hall and actually at that point so was the uh, Electric Theatre. The interesting thing though is actually my father, very briefly, was one of the projectionists for the Electric Theatre. And uh, he used to tell me about having to walk up the stairs outside to get into the projection room because the actual projection projectionist actually had to go in through a little door up the fire escape. So to get into that room, basically you had to come out of the main doors, walk around the side of the building and then walk up the actual fire escape to get in. And he actually showed one of the films that we showed at Cozy Cinema, uh, which was Stairway to Heaven. Uh, it uh, stars um, Roger Livesey. Now, there is a connection with the Livesey family to cinema in Mexborough because the Livesey family actually, um, they actually built the Hippodrome, the Prince of Wales Theatre, uh, much, much earlier than Roger, of course. Uh, but that family actually sort of started a lot of the cinema in Mexborough because the well, the Prince of Wales Theatre was one of the very first places that actually showed films. I production designed a feature called England is Mine, which is a Morrissey biopic. Uh, so I kind of connected it in many levels because it was like the music, so it was the theme and it was all set in the 70s, so I've got older brothers, I remember kind of their vibe of what 
um, what they were wearing, kind of what they had dressed in their bedrooms in the 70s. So I took that inspiration from that um, into the sets. Uh, and then also we, we dressed the whole house. So you have a living room, a kitchen, the bedrooms, um, and, and you just kind of refer back to family members homes of, of how it was dressed, textures, colours and, and then the finer detail would always go in uh, alongside the script so whatever props they needed uh, it would just be in keeping of that era so it all tied in. Now, obviously I remember going there as a child going to watch um, sort of the Saturday matinees quite often where you'd see film, films from the um, Children's Film Art Foundation and people like Dennis Waterman so he's we were a child star and he were in a lot of those sort of films. So I can remember seeing them. And me and my brother used to go down and buy the film posters from the Majestic. So they'd bring the film posters up, they'd unravel them, and we'd decide which ones we wanted to buy. And I remember getting the film poster for Jaws in the 1970s when that had just come out, you know, and that was brilliant because you got the massive grip poster, the shark on the wall then, which looked pretty good. Your background, where you're from, it, it follow, you, you kind of led in that direction. So within me, with the work I've been involved in, I've always followed um, scripts which were nostalgic or um, outdoor. So I'm um, from Mexborough, Barnborough, it's quite rural. So again, working on all creatures, you get the opportunity to film uh, so fictionally the town is called Darabu which is in Grassington so I know of all North Yorkshire that area uh, and then um, Vera again is um, Northumberland so it's beautiful scenery uh, it just takes you back to times where so from Barnbury you'd walk through the crags um, along the river um, we have family in Mexborough, Denaby, Swinton where as, as children we'd walk from Barnborough to those areas to visit family. So you're walking through fields and woods and um, I've always been quite outdoorish so that's kind of my connection. I suppose when moving pictures first started I know you, you hear all these stories about people being scared because there's a train coming towards them not realising that it's just a projection on the screen you know so there's in a way that still sort of affects people, you know, you still see something that is not real, but it affects you in a very real way. So, it, like I say, it really does it produce emotions in, in you and produces sort of possibly new ways of looking at things. I mean, I learned so much about films from my mother. I mean, go along and she'd say, well, Alan Ladd's very good, right, in shame. He's nice for the young ladies. He doesn't compare to Spencer Tracy or Orson Welles or Gregory Peck, but he's lovely. But I'd walk a million miles, Brian, to see Spencer Tracy or Gregory Peck. And so they were, you know, my mother and everybody, around Mexico, they all knew their films. They knew the directors. They knew the music. I mean, astonishing. It was big, big business. The cinemas there in Mexico were the talk of the town. They inspired me to be an actor. I wanted to be an actor. So I owe everything to Mexico. I got a scholarship there. I got awards there. I got marvelous teachers, Harry Dobson the greatest director I've ever worked with in my life. I've been to Stratford and Avon, the West End, I've made films, but I've never met a director like Harry Dobson. Wonderful, a great big bull of a man, sensational. And when he rehearsed people, if they weren't giving enough, he would say to them, give your buggers, give, give your buggers. Don't be lazy, you must give. As I said, uh, if you went to the cinema, I, I, I went I went for a penny. The posh seats were seven pence, seven pennies. So we could afford it. And if you didn't have the money, they'd well, go on, lad, in you go. They'd let, you know, they'd let us in for nothing. You know, 
But in actual fact, uh, there were the, the pennies, which was at the back, then the four pennies halfway, and then the ten pennies. And then you might have the eleven pennies for the people who are lovers and courters engaged to be married. And they'd sit at the back in the balcony, snogging away. Aye, aye. Concentrate on the cinema there. And, and they'd be kissing and snogging throughout the bloody film. So there was a snogging area for people. I, we wanted to see Frankenstein with Boris Karloff, but we weren't allowed in. We were too young. It would frighten us too much. So I got made up as an old woman. And I put a shawl on and a grey big overcoat over me and became an old woman like that, you know. And then I did all the makeup and I went there and I said, it's, you know, an adult and three children. And the children could go in if they went with an adult. And they thought I was an old woman. She said, yeah, it an adult and three children. And we went in. And it was one of the biggest bloody mistakes in my life. Because Boris Karloff, as Frankenstein, because she wasn't allowed in as a kid. Bloody hell. He came on. Oh. Bloody terrified. I didn't sleep for bloody weeks. Nor did the kids. for this project I'm really hoping that there are more opportunities to take film back out into the community to really give people an option uh, an opportunity to make their own decisions about what we see where we see it how we program it and try and get people involved as many ways as possible and create exciting community events for people to talk about obviously going to college university um, my opportunities have grown um, but I've still kept a connection to where I'm from so even though pursuing what I've done it's taken me to London to Manchester to Newcastle to wherever um, I've, I've kept an eye on like the arts and creatives of what's happening in Doncaster uh, and I'd definitely say in the last five to ten years there's, there's a huge growth and improvement of that um, and I think there's a lot more opportunity now uh, to engage with the community um, and, and arts and culture I think is more powerful and accepted and it's a wave of its own which before it was quite niche wasn't it where I find it more accessible. I'd like to see a cultural centre where not only you show films but there would be theatre, music etc. That's, that's what it really needs is, is a central point for uh, to, to revive that to, that Mexico culture, because Mexico has got a, a, a real rich history, heritage of culture. You know the the, the film stars that uh, and actors that have that have come from this town is uh, is, is is fantastic. Kind of um, bring the barriers down and make it more accessible, and uh, feel that. Uh, though you're from the Yorkshire region or you're from the Mexico area, you can engage with film. Um, arts, anything creative um, and, and follow your dreams and have that passion and the opportunities arise and um, it, it'd be fantastic to see that happening more and, and there be platforms out there for a younger generation to engage with and be able to do that. This is a working class town and there are, there are lots of uh, talented working class people but who need the chance to develop their talents. There's obviously a real interest in cinema in Mexborough, not just from it watching as an audience member, but actually taking part. There's big groups of creative writing folk in Mexborough as well. I just think there's so many opportunities where people could potentially get involved. As I said, not just as an audience member, but it might be that we could have some potential script writers out there as well. That cinema to me is an art form, so Hopefully what it does give people is a, a, an outlet, I mean, as a viewer, uh, to actually exp experience other sort of realms, other, other worlds, other points of view. You know, and as a community, that's got to make the community much healthier 
place to, to live in really, all these experiences that people actually have, even though they're sort of second hand almost experiences, it's still something that's got to enrich somebody's life. So Bill, you've got a little red envelope next to you. It'd be great if you could great if you could take that out and take a look at the contents. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember going with uh, friends from school um, when I was at Doncaster Road School, so I would have been nine, ten. I would go down for, to watch the uh, Saturday matinees with two or three friends. We'd go into the foyer, you could buy sweets in the foyer and that, and they actually had a popcorn uh, machine as well, so you could get popcorn as well, and drinks. Used to, be, used to get the little sort of plastic containers of drink that you used to put the straw in the top. So I used to get one of those, and I mean, mainly boiled sweets as well, actually, funny enough, I, I seem to recall for some reason, and just buying them. Uh, so we'd sit there in the cinema drinking that pop and then you could make a really horrible noise by actually moving the uh, straw up and down in the plastic. So if the film wasn't very good you used to annoy people by doing that. I have a memory as a child going with my parents to a cinema in Conisborough which was called the Globe Palace uh, and there used to be um, old lantern evenings uh, so you'd go in what was the old cinema but they'd be projecting um, black and white images uh, sometimes they'd be moving images um, often they were like almost like a slideshow uh, that, but they were black and white footage of um, areas around Mexborough, Denneby, Cunnysborough, uh, landscapes uh, or characters um, a chap who I still have in memory from being a child was um, an old guy and he used to be in a horse and cart and the, and the cart was small, it was for one person, uh, with a donkey and apparently he used to go around Denneby and I think he used to go from pub to pub in uh, his horse and cart with his donkey. I've never actually took a girlfriend to the cinema, I was thinking about that. Uh, I mean I did have plenty of girlfriends at the time but just never took them there for some reason. Uh, in 1970, when I was growing up, I suppose, uh, the, uh, the railway children. And that was filmed at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, yeah. And that, that was, I suppose, one of my favourite films because it was about railways. Back in the 90s, so uh, you'd have Brastoff, Full Monty, Little Voice, uh, and they were all of a film which kind of connected with me with the nostalgia element of it uh, and I've found moving into film and uh, becoming a production designer myself I'm drawn to scripts which are also nostalgic. Favourite film growing up it's probably Robin Hood starring Errol Flynn. Uh, it's such a great film I mean it's full of action and everything and uh, I just loved bow and arrows when I was a kid anyway so uh, I mean it's such a great sort of hero Robin Hood anyway, particularly from around this area. One of my favourite films is Hugo. I don't know if you've seen Hugo, but I, I just think it's just, it's the perfect blend of nostalgia and joy. Um, that seems to be the sort of film that I'm attracted to. I, I really loved um, Stan and Ollie, uh, the most recent. I thought that was a fantastic film. Uh, Steve Coburn was absolutely Fantastic in that, yeah. I just watched one that's set in Swinton, uh, where I used to work. I used to actually work at Swinton Comprehensive School, and it's called Everybody's Talking About Jamie, uh, which is a brilliant little film, you know, absolutely fantastic film. And I watched that with my wife, Vicky, the other day, and I kept saying, oh yeah, I used to work in that classroom. That, you know, that's, that's view I used to have when I was in the prep room, you know, and, and probably annoyed her quite a bit. But the other weird thing is, is that I've, other than living in Mexborough, the only other place I've ever lived is Parson Cross in Sheffield. And that just happened to be another part of the film as well. And I just thought, like, how strange this is, you know, watching a film and it's sort of two of the major places of my life, in a sense. And it's, it's got those places in it. 
But yeah, there's, there's so many brilliant, brilliant films out there. And there's bit, there's, I mean, they're still being made, so, you know, it's hard to pin them down, really. For Mexbra, we worked specifically with Dominic Summers. He was their arts lead for a period of time. Um, and working closely with the community, Cozy Cinema um, came to life. With the larger television screens and things, you're sort of getting a, towards having the sort of cinema feel in a house, but it's not the same as actually having the audience of a cinema. And that's, I think, the thing that with what the Cozy Cinema tries to do. It actually tries to gather a community together to watch a film. So you're not just getting the family together, you know, you're getting a larger number of people than that. We wanted an opportunity to help the community programme activity again. Um, taking that out onto the streets and having big kind of um, festival style cinema showings as well as small Cozy Cinema showings at the Concertine Club. It was quite a good venue and we had quite a lot of films shown uh, there until, unfortunately, the concertina closed. The films that were put on uh, contained perhaps a, a little feature before the film. Uh, I, I can remember when we had uh, Brass Off, for example. With, uh, there was a brass band playing prior to showing the film. There was a lot of memorable evenings. Because of Covid over the last couple of years there hasn't been any showings. Um, the Cozy Cinema group are very much getting back on their feet. They're very excited about programming from Mexborough Business Centre again. But Right Up Street are really interested in looking at how we can support the community to have some say, some involvement in what happens around cinema showings in Mexborough again. There are platforms already happening where they're engaging with people to give them the experience of um, watching film and seeing film uh, and I think if they're screening films which are shot in this region uh, it'll open people's eyes to think oh god right the, this film could this film happened here and there could be opportunity for other films to uh, be shot here. Well, lots of other places have got their own little cinemas and you go into a, a, a cinema say in, in Sheffield or, or Doncaster or anywhere and they've not only got one screen, they've got about 12 screens. <laughs> Mexico's got I think. Although in the old days it had seven or eight cinemas. So that's the importance of cosy cinema, uh, is, uh, is to try to revive uh, that for the, for, for the community. I hear that there's something out there where um, it's given people the opportunity to come together. Uh, it's fantastic moving forward that you can download and stream and you can be on a train and watch a film on your phone or your laptop. Um, but I think the magic of cinema should be preserved and, and the opportunity to have that back in Mexico would be fantastic. It's Saturday night in Mexborough, mid 1940s to be precise. I've got half a crown in my pocket and a bag of market spies. There's a big long queue at Empire. On back row there'll be keepers. Fire Eater Herbert does his act and Jimmy Bull sells papers. The post office front is lively. Arguments on pits bring thirst. We'll settle them down at South Yorkshire or at Fish Shop of Alice Hurst. At Bull's Head there's a row on and someone daft and silly. They'll finish up the best of pals with piano tunes from Millie. At Woof's the all of snooker and rising stars no lack and many an eye sports purple hue from flying crimisars black. The staff of life is busy and songs sung there are many from local lads in audible voice to mechanical tunes for a penny. At the Montague there's fight talk with boxing bouts at rear. Hot talk of champs past and present and of iron egg memories dear. The tardis packed as usual. Now there you must be. 
A snooker on with a tan of steak. Good sense gives way to rage. It's second house at Royal. Three stooges first, they're good. Our necks near broke from looking up at the screen from planks of wood. At the Empress modern dancing. At Burton's show a leg. Romance in bloom to lingering blues at the band of Maestro Clay. At Oxford known as Ranch House, side door entry for pay dodges. At objects thrown from gardens grown at Dean Orchie and Roy Rogers. The concertina's swinging, the main seat's full as well. While up at talk, comedians' jokes are getting laughs real swell. At the Masons, talent competition. Down at Plant, they dance a jig. It's full of folk on High Street and quick wit from Billy Biggs. There's bother down on Low Road, but the lock-up is quite near. They'll all get free night's lodgings, then blame it on the beer. The band of the Salvation Army, the joys of heaven bring. At Senior's shop, there's chips from pop and place and cod and ling. It makes for friendship plenty and a happy atmosphere. And to all pals gone and departed, I oft shed many a tear. Life's a coat of many colors. It is never black and white. Can't have one without. The dark without the light In the summer we were lovers With the flame our hearts would burn A flame the autumn would